Here are seven ways to make your indie game better and get it done in half the amount of time. And I guarantee you will take away at least one thing from this video that will save you months of wasted time. My name's TJ. I spent the past six months developing Castles on Clouds. My goal was to get it on Steam and I did. You can go play the demo right now. Or if it's like a month in the future, you could probably play the actual game. I'm going to go over the most important things that I learned so that you can get the lessons without the scars of being an acoustic goblin that didn't leave his room for six months. Now, the first of which, and what I think is the most important point is to set deadlines. Knowing that I only had six months to complete this game, I told a lot of people that I was going to get it done in six months. It kept me honest and it kept me rolling out of bed. Even some mornings that I was really tired, I knew that I still had to keep working on the game and keep progressing. Now, because I knew I had such a tight deadline when I was originally scoping out the game, what features I wanted to add had to be prioritized by what I could get done in that time. So, Maybe there was something I really wanted to add, but I knew it was going to take months of development time. I had to cut that idea and focus more on what I knew I could get done. I also intentionally left the final sixth month completely empty so I could use it for doing things like balancing and polishing the game. That wound up being 100% needed. Now, estimating the amount of development time it takes to do something isn't going to be an exact science. So I continually went back every single day, every single week, and reorganized my roadmap as to what I wanted to get done at what time. I'm gonna link my roadmap down below so you can see day by day, week by week, month by month, how I was structuring and organizing the project. This was super important because there are things that are going to take way longer than you expect. For example, localization kill me, but I'll, I'll talk about that in a second. By the way, I feel like a deadline of uh, six months was a little too long. After month four or five, I wanted to restart the project and apply everything that I had learned in the first few months to the next game, but I didn't, and I'm very happy I didn't. As I said earlier, some things like balancing and localization wound up taking way longer than I expected. And if I had just restarted the project like I had done with so many projects in the past, I never would have understood how long those things are going to take. But now that I know, going forward, I can more accurately scope for the next game. You can think of it kind of like you're doing a roguelike run. Maybe the build for this game isn't perfect, but I still want to play it out so I can encounter the enemies that I'll see in the future. Now, as I said, localization wound up being a massive hard point for me. Maybe 50% of my player base could come from Eastern audiences like China and Japan, but I'll never know that because I didn't get the localization completed. In time. So I'm making this sort of as a little time capsule to myself so that in the future I can go back and look at this and know, look, next game, I really wanted to have a three month dev cycle with the final month being reserved for polish and balance. The entire point of doing this video though is so that you can learn from my mistakes without having the scars from doing them yourself. I think the saying is a wise man learns from his mistakes and even wiser man learns from the mistakes of others. And although my game is now pretty polished, pretty bug free, it looks really good. Overall, I'd say it's about a five out of 10. I wish it was an eight or nine out of 10. What could I have done to get it to that point? And since I still want to get it to that point, how much longer is it going to take? Now, let's talk about scope for a second. Because I had such strict deadlines, scope creep wasn't an issue for me, but my problem was that my initial scope was wildly unrealistic. This was what I originally wrote down as a tag for the game. This is way too much. What happens when you're trying to do genre mashups of like six different genres is that each one winds up coming out half-baked. What would have been better is if I had focused all my time on making one to two genres and perfecting them, five Michelin stars, I think the end result of the game would have been way better. Let me say for instance, city builder elements. I spent a bunch of time making features and mechanics for it, but because I only had so many weeks to work on this game, what happens is the city builder elements feel kind of mid. It doesn't feel great. I should have spent that time focusing on the core genre instead of adding all these extra unnecessary features. So genre mashups definitely need to be limited if done at all. So moving on to Game design. This wound up being a huge weakness for me. Now, I'm not gonna ask you to pause the video because I, I don't do that. Does anyone actually do that? But just think for a second, what's your current favorite game and what makes it so fun? Now, the first thing that came to mind probably wasn't the flashy graphics or super polished code architecture or its perfect performance. 
Although those things are all still important and necessary and they should be in every single game, there's something else that makes the core gameplay loop fun. Now, what can I do to learn what makes my favorite game fun other than actually going out and playing or watching people play these games. So in order to solve these game design questions, I started taking a few minutes each day to look at other games and expose myself to what players are expecting. Because if I don't know what players are expecting, I'm never going to hit those expectations. And you're competing against every other game for your player's attention. You really need to feed your creativity. Coding 12 hours a day is worthless if you're not coding something fun. Playing an hour of 20 minutes till dawn gave me the idea to add impactful trade-offs on relics and cards. So I rewrote all 30 or so of my relics to make them much more interesting. Then after watching one hour of Wanderbot's playthrough of Thronefall's new roguelike mode, I saw how the layout reset every few nights. This gave me the idea of regening the island each season, but carrying over the player's cards and relics. This resetting progression each season literally improved the game 100 times and it let the procedural generation which is such a core underlying feature of the game really shine another change that i made after checking out some of these other games was to decrease the amount of level ups but increase their impactfulness so instead of you know giving the player a weak card every 30 seconds i gave a stronger card every minute again watching a video by adam millard the architect of games on why vampire survivors feel so good convinced me to add these damage numbers to hits, which makes upgrading towers feel so much more impactful. My monkey brain gets excited when I see the numbers go up. The good news is that this is something that I can fix. So I went back and completely redid the meta progression system. I also added these upgrades that the player can get by completing certain tasks. This brings it more in line with some of the other games that I mentioned and some other very popular roguelike games right now. And it's genuinely a night and day difference as to how much better it feels. And you can go check it out right now. Like I said, the demo is gonna be up for at least another month until the game's released. Now next, I wanna talk about the gameplay loop. This wound up being a bit of a sore point for me as sometimes I'd have to play the game for 20 minutes just to get to a state where I could check the balancing on some of the later levels. I was listening to this really good podcast called Designer Notes where I think they were interviewing the developers of Armello on how they set up a core gameplay loop that they could test anything and within five minutes know if it was a fun feature to add to the game. Now, if I wind up making another roguelike game, what I'm probably going to do is keep the entire gameplay loop to under 20 minutes, make it quick, snappy, and fun. I don't have to reinvent the wheel. I don't have to make a grand 4X strategy game. I wanna make something that I can complete and that, I think, is a much more realistic goal. I want to be able to test out new features in under five minutes and either yay or nay them based on how fun they are. The next point on architecture, uh, that's something that I actually feel like I did correctly. I talked about it in my Godot video, but that book on game programming patterns was huge. I feel like I really spent a lot of time the first few months setting up a rock-solid architecture. So now, whenever I want to add a new card or add a new relic, it's super easy. Everything flows very well. I didn't have to refactor the project at all. Very, very happy with how the architecture turned out. So wanted to add one little win that I had. Moving on to intuitiveness and having actual players play test the game. Back in January, I set up a play test. If you're selling on Steam, you get a free play test uh, app ID that you can give out keys to everybody. It's not for the final game, it's just for a play test. But this was awesome as I got players to actually check out the game and tell me what made sense and what didn't. This led to a lot of really important changes and I was able to refocus more on mechanics that players really enjoyed and spent less time building out mechanics that no one really cared about. It also came down to the little things such as player asking me, you know, how do I do X? And I say, you click button Y. They say, oh, I didn't know that. And I'm like, oh, well, yeah, I never told them to click button Y. So this is the intuitiveness of being able to accurately tell your players how to play the game. You know, you've been coding and developing this for weeks now. You know every little feature your players aren't going to and you need to communicate that. I'm going to briefly touch on marketing. Twitter was kind of mid. I don't feel like I got a whole lot out of the amount of time I put into that, but maybe that's just because I have a younger account. YouTube videos take a lot, a lot of time and effort, and I'd rather be spending more of that time and effort on developing games. So sub count has definitely been dropping, but 
that's okay. Also, um, getting into steam fests, you'll hear a lot about how important it is. It is not a guarantee. I got denied from the Deck Builder Fest. I got denied from the uh, Endless Replayability Fest. I did finally get into the Tower Defense Fest uh, that's happening the final week of July. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. If I'm not, I didn't say it. And I said the list was seven. I lied. It's now eight. Little bonus tip, don't skip out on life. I was able to try to go to the gym every day and keep up relationships, but my health definitely suffered. I uh, didn't get out of the house very often, wasn't walking around much. There was this one Friday that I wound up skipping a concert because I wanted to stay in and get more work done. I definitely regret that. I am going to probably keep working seven days a week going forward, but you can do that and still enjoy some nights just playing video games with the boys. Now, I'm really glad I stuck to it. The final game's not perfect, but I'm very, very happy with everything that I've accomplished. The pinnacle achievement, I think, of working on this game for six months is this video and taking everything that I learned and applying it to the next game, which is just gonna be two times as good as this one. Thank you for watching. If any of this has helped you at all, please consider dropping a like. It makes a huge difference in the algorithm. And if you wanna see what this game becomes and what my next game is, Feel free to subscribe and stick around. Thank you guys.